Hi, welcome to- Just a tall black coffee, please. Hello. There you go. And here you go. Awesome. Hey, what's going on with the camera? Hey, I'm Eric Letterman. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. This is Faith in Coffee. We in America are immigrants, millions of every nation and calling, drawn together by their vision of America. We are a generous and welcoming people. I'd like to see something done about the illegal alien problem that would be so sensitive and so understanding. They are not our friends, believe me. Several churches in Arizona offering sanctuary to undocumented immigrants. Yeah, we all agree on the need to better secure the border. The reality is families are being torn apart. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than people born in the United States. Millions of every nation and calling drawn together by their vision of America. A vision of opportunity and freedom. Make it possible for them to come here legally with a work permit and then while they're working and earning here, they pay taxes here. Most of those seeking passage to America are farmers and peasants. The program known as DACA is being rescinded. We simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked. We need to question whether the law itself is unjust. And when they go on to go back, they can go back and they can cross and open the border both ways. There is hope of a better life in America Sharing common aspirations. Imagine you've done everything right your entire life. Studied hard, worked hard, maybe even graduated at the top of your class. Only to suddenly face the threat of deportation to a country that you know nothing about. Some pro-immigration groups accusing the president of playing politics. I'm here today because the time has come for common sense, comprehensive immigration reform. The time is now. Now's the time. In the Hebrew Bible, how to treat an immigrant is listed at least dozens of times. We could get into policy debates or talk about walls because, well, they've always been so effective in history. Not. Immigration was a big deal in ancient Israel. The whole Exodus story. The people of Israel are already resident immigrants in Egypt as a result of a famine during Joseph's time when he was the Pharaoh's number one. Make it so, number one. Then they escape and become desert nomads. Then they become an invading force and a foreign occupier. In the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the people of Israel are very clearly and directly instructed to have one law for both citizens and immigrants, and that they're to welcome and even love the immigrant and shall, do you hear that, shall, treat the immigrant as one of their own. Later, the prophets get in on the action too, calling the people to stop oppressing the immigrant, which means immigrants were in fact being oppressed and taken advantage of. Otherwise, why even mention it? Fast forward to Jesus, this guy who breaks all kinds of social barriers, regularly talks to, hangs out with, and even eats with Samaritans, sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, adulterers. What you do, that is how you treat the least of these you do to me. An argument that's often made to support reinforcing our border with Mexico is Paul's admonition to respect the laws of governments. There is more in the Bible about not following governments when the government violates our religious values. Before the line in the sand and the border fences and walls that we have today, the border between the U.S. and Mexico was a river in Louisiana. In 1821, Mexico gained independence from Spain and took over this vast, vast land. White European American citizens of the United States were crossing borders and illegally living on some of this land. Mexico didn't seem to mind because they were actually struggling to control this vast territory, but it didn't take long before Mexico realized they had a huge, immigration problem. Thus the Alamo and the Mexican-American War. Surveyors were eventually sent out to mark these lines, but even the line we now have was tough to define. It wasn't until 1848 that the border we have today was actually established. Ron Dungan of the Arizona Republic wrote a great article surveying the history of our border. In five decades, the border had changed from no border to an imaginary border to a disputed border to a negotiated border to finally align on a map. 
It then took 10 more years to finally put up markers that would actually define the border on the ground. The point here is that in ancient times, borders were regions defining the identity of a people. Immigrants weren't a threat. In fact, they were an opportunity to grow an economy. They could be easily exploited. Thus, all the rules and prohibitions in the Hebrew scriptures. The lines we draw on the sand and mark with all our military defenses is truly something that was created relatively recently. The first so-called fence between the U.S. and Mexico was actually a barbed wire fence installed in 1940 to keep undocumented Mexican cattle from grazing on U.S. lands. Our first undocumented immigrants were cows. It wasn't until the 1980s that we started to reinforce our border, building bigger and less permeable fences. And it wasn't until the last 20 or so years that we started to really militarize our border with, with drones and guns and pressure sensors, mostly against peasant migrants. Yet in our scriptures, it's clear that we are to treat immigrants as though they're part of us. They're one of our own. Doesn't that also mean protecting them against exploitation or oppression, even by our own government? If we really want to get biblical, yes, we have a right and responsibility to defend ourselves and one another against threats. If you want to slow illegal immigration, the solution really is simple. Make it legal. It's the old story of, of babies floating down the river in baskets. One day a villager downriver notices one of the first babies coming down, rescues it, and then finds out that there's a whole bunch more. So that villager gets a bunch of other villagers to come and help. They set up a 24-hour surveillance, they have recovery teams, they have triage units, but no one goes up river to figure out why all these babies are being put in the water in the first place. People are coming for a reason. Have we taken the time to look, in this case, downriver, to see why people are coming upriver. Who are these folks coming across? Why aren't they able to get jobs in Mexico and Guatemala and El Salvador or Honduras? I actually agree with our current president. We need to take a closer look at our trade agreements like NAFTA, which he's right, is a bad deal. It's allowed heavily government subsidized commodities like corn and soy to flood Mexican and other Central American markets. Putting out of business Mexican and other corn and soy farmers, which puts farm workers out of jobs. Where are the jobs? Where the corn and the soy is actually being grown in the US. I know I said I wasn't going to talk politics, but I guess that's kind of the point of this entire blog. Politics cannot be separated from our religious values. If we're compassionate and loving over here, but we refuse to look deeper at why something is happening over here, then we are the very definition of hypocrites. We Christians are to be a welcoming people. And right now, Immigrants, documented and undocumented, are being exploited and oppressed, and they are afraid. There are a, a ton of ways to learn more and get involved and to live out our Christian values as a loving and grace-filled and radically welcoming people, embodying the characteristics of the one we seek to follow. So I encourage you to read up on this issue. In fact, you can go to PCUSA.org and a whole bunch of wonderful information will come up. And there are also two great books by Todd Miller, who is a reporter and has done a lot on uh, immigration. The first one is Border Patrol Nation, which came out in 2014. And then his newest book, Storm in the Wall, Climate Change, Migration, and Homeland Security. You can also find a local church or a community organization that is doing work on the front lines of immigration. Of course, we welcome you at University Presbyterian Church in Tempe, where I'm the pastor and we struggle a lot with this issue. Get informed, get involved. And of course, if you like my video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Eric Letterman. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye.